All right, everybody. We're gonna start talking about NixOS and uh, why it's wonderful. And um, I don't even remember what title this talk is, but uh, I find NixOS giving real superpowers in understanding how Linux works, how uh, operating systems are put together, and uh, gives me extreme power to experiment and try stuff. Um, I don't have any slides written for this at all, and so I'm just gonna show some stuff. And uh, we'll, I'm hoping you'll take it from there. And I'll just show you some cool stuff. I hope that's OK. Um, I, it should be pretty interesting. Um, so this, uh, just for what it's worth, on my GitHub, which is uh, G-R-A-H-A-M-C, uh, I have just pushed a repository called Tox. Uh, it has all the notes and junk uncurated from what I've put together for everything. Um, I just did a git had everything and then pushed it. So um, <laughs> if there's anything missing, I probably didn't make it. Uh, um, okay, so okay, here we are. So this one is going to involve a lot more typing, so I've moved over here, and uh, let's just get started. Um, let's see. So who here has used NixOS? All right, maybe it'll be easier if I ask the opposite question. Who here has not used NixOS? Okay, cool. Um, who here feels comfortable? What? Dar Darwin. Darwin. Oh, cool. Uh, so this will be a little weird for that, but we, it has the module system, so yeah. that's pretty good. Uh, who is not familiar with the module system? Cool. All right. So this will be fun. Uh, great. So uh, every NixOS system is, uh, let me back it up a little bit. NixOS is sort of like, uh, it does configuration management, but Puppet and Chef and Ansel and Salt they log onto a system and just make some changes, and uh, <laughs> and hopefully it gets you where you want it. Uh, NixOS starts the opposite direction. It starts with a specification and creates a brand new system every single time. That's a little weird, but it uses Nix and it uses the caching of Nix, so it's not a ton of work every single time. So let's take a look at uh, what uh, I need to close windows here so I don't look there. Uh, uh, what a NixOS configuration looks like. Uh, so at the top, uh, at the top we have I-18 console PMAP, we're a Dvorak. Can you make it fall a little? Yeah, you bet. How's that? Cool. That's good? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, so console PMAP is set to Dvorak. I type Dvorak. Uh, so, and, and this is going to involve a system that I'm actually going to be typing into, so I don't want to make a fool of myself. So, um, we're going to build a system. Its console key is going to be in the rack. We're going to have in nginx enabled. Nginx is going to serve a single domain for like any request it gets. It'll serve uh, some files, which is in this directory called public. Uh, and this is the HTML of the file that we're going to serve. And uh, yeah, moving on. Uh, we have some firewall configuration. By default, NixOS blocks all the ports. Uh, and this will allow port 80 and port 3. We don't have Let's Encrypt enabled, but it's pretty trivial to turn it on. But I'm not going to go there because this won't actually work because it's not on the internet. Um, and uh, it sets my host name to hello. Uh, under users, it's uh, forced the root user to have an empty password because it's just a demo. So that's fine. Uh, it sets mutable users to, fal to false. This is pretty neat. Uh, with Puppet and whatnot, if you add a user, you have to explicitly add a line later if you want to get rid of it. You have to say, whatever that user was, remove. Um, with NixOS and mutable users set to false, uh, the list of users defined here is the list of users. And, and if you make a change and remove somebody, it, they're gone. Is it true, usually, by default? I think so, yeah. yeah. So the problem with setting mutable users to true is if you forgot to change your password, or set your password, or you forgot to put yourself in wheel for sudo, uh, you have hurt yourself. Um, so it's, it's a little bit safer to start true, uh, but yeah. Uh, it also sets this m message of the day, which will display when you log in. And it has some, uh, <coughs> some nice messages there, including describing what our system looks like. Um, and then finally, uh, it installs Vim, which is fine, but I'm going to change this to max 25 Nox, which I think is the name of the package. And we'll find out. Any questions about this so far? Sure, yeah. I'll get to that right away. Any other questions about this so far? Yeah. How, like, the idea of having 
the, the attribute set used as a as an input to the function at the top. Yeah. Packages contain a dot dot dot. Yeah. Can you like explain a little bit on like what the dot 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 is? Yeah. Or like. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about that. So this is this is a NixOS module. NixOS modules have access to the package set and the rest of the configuration of the system. Um, and so this is going to be imported, and then as, as the NixOS system's configuration is evaluated, uh, the different modules can look at each other's configuration to come up with a final configuration. Does that help? Yeah. Uh, so to put a sort of a fine pin on it, so we refer to config there, and then down here refer to config.networking.hostname, right? And we refer to system.nixos.release. All of these are off of the, the config attribute set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the dot 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 is basically to say, mm. well, there could be other arguments. Yeah. We don't care about them. Yeah. Like, who calls this module with other arguments? I don't understand, like, why that's convention. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, there is a way with deep dark trickery to add more <laughs> parameters, which I, I don't I don't do. Um, but there are some other parameters, like lib is passed in. Um, so you, there, there's just a, f a few more things, but I, d I don't have a list or anything. But will this, this config uh, work if you remove the dot dot dot? No. It won't work? No. Because more, more pack params are definitely passed in. Ah. Um, we could, like, find out an exhaustive list, but, like, I don't, I'm like 99% of the ones I've written start with that. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think the module uh, just checks how, which arguments it needs to uh, pass and then just pass these. Mm. So maybe it will work even without the dots. Interesting. I don't think it does, but I I would defer to you. So <laughs> um, cool. The last thing is like system. Yeah. Where's system? Uh, the system? Yeah. So that that is on so config dot system. Oh okay, it's with config. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, all right. Go ahead. Now you said that by default all ports are closed. So when you install an application that is using a port, mm -hmm. the package of the application is opening the port? Ah, no. <laughs> there, the only exception is OpenSSH. If you enable OpenSSH, it will open port 22. No other applications open ports. How, how do they work? So do they need a port? Sure. So that's up to you. Okay. So it, it's up to you to decide, is this, is this like database supposed to be listening publicly, or is it just a local thing? Um, and that's up to you to, to sort it out. Um, but by default, we, we try to keep the system minimal and secure. And so um, the other thing about uh, this, this allowed TCP ports is it's opening up on all interfaces. And you might want to do some especially elaborate firewall config, um, which can be annoying to override later. OK, sound good? Cool. Let's, uh, let's run this. Oops. Oh, boy. Type in wrong spot again. <laughs> All right, so uh, in NixOS, um, you do, that's my, hmm. It's quite long, isn't it? Mm. <coughs> oh boy. Is that too confusing? No. If I type down here? No. All right. Let's uh, let's actually make that slightly longer. Oops. Cool. All right. Mm. One more. There we go. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> um, clear. Great. So we can use NixOS dash rebuild. This is a little bit of a misnomer because it's used to build. <laughs> uh, and uh, we want to typically NixOS rebuild looks at the configuration at Etsy NixOS configuration .nix, but we want to use a different one, so we will pass uh, a different one. Okay. So at this point, it is going to get Nix packages from my my channel, and that determines what version of Nix packages I use. Um, I could override that and specify uh, specific Nix packages, but Whatever my system currently has is fine. Um, oh boy. Uh, ah, okay. I need to pass the sub command. So let's do a uh, build. Uh, okay, that's not right. That's fine. Uh, it is complaining because I haven't told it where to write the bootloader, but it has a secret command 
called Build EM. <laughs> it's not really a secret, but it is what it is. Like a secret that your secrets. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here we go. It's built a system path. It's built all of what should be in the Etsy directory. It's, it's put all of these pieces into one. Uh, this system that I just created is very similar to my host, so it really didn't need to build very much. Uh, it just has less, frankly. Uh, so I, I have this result symlink, right? Everybody's familiar with this result symlink. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I do result bin, uh, I can run I can run the VM. And uh, here we go. All right. I don't know if I can make this bigger. Hmm. 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 Uh, cool, let's get, we'll see if that, what that does. <laughs> Alright, so we'll log in with root. It doesn't have a password, so it just drops me right in. There's that method of the day, or the message of the day. Is this readable, or is this terrible? <laughs> what? <laughs> Maybe a little bit of both? Hmm, yikes. <laughs> That's pretty tough. Is it in <coughs> Sorry? Zoom in the mm, Yeah. Let's actually, let's do... Let's move this to screen two. And, uh, uh, more screen. How's that? It's a little better? All right. I wish I could do better. So this is actually a virtual machine or? Yeah. So, so like, a, OK, so it's not like a live container or a dollar. No. It's a virtual machine. machine running in QEMU, and it's running. It's on system D. It has like a certain number of processors and RAM and disk space allocated to it. Okay, so and in fact, um, if we okay, move that around, go over to two, three. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, so there's a hello.qcow2, so that's the root file system of that view. Yeah. Where do you specify all the configurations for hosting virtual machines on your... Uh, so there's no configuration. So it just needs some defaults. So, so this configuration, the mix that we were looking at, that's, that's the complete configuration for the VM. Yes. And then it uses Kimu to run it as a VM on my as my user, so there's no host config. So for your user, you have configured Kimu to uh, Kimu as a, a virtualization technology, right? And you set up all the parameters. Uh, no, no, it's just um, uh, let's kill this. So if we look at the result in uh, run hello VM, uh, it's just a script that uses Kimu and like sets up some paths. And is that answering your question? Uh, yeah, this, it got, this got me as well. It's, not, it's not just a thing you run. There's no you create a script. setup you need. You, you can, you can in, 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 when testing, for example, I don't use this command, okay. but when you test with, with the testing infrastructure, you can set how many gigs you want to give to, to the VM and so on. Okay, thank you. It's, this is temporary. Like, this isn't a thing you'd run in production. Yep. Thanks. Yeah? Does that help? Yes. A lot. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Um, cool, let's do, uh, great, so, all right, so the next question I think I'll try to answer is, where are these options coming from, and like, how do you find out about them? Does that sound cool? Do people yes. want to know that? All right, um, let's go to three, and we'll move our browser over to three, and so typically what I'll do is I'll go to nixos.org slash nixos slash options .html. And that's linked to from the home page. So just the options and look options. And then like, what's some software people run? Emacs. Emacs? Yeah. All right. So there's a service for Emacs. Probably runs Emacs daemon. And uh, let's see, install. Install these user services if you want. Uh, you can specify the exact package you want. How about, um, what's something kind of cool? Nginx. What? Nginx? Nginx? Sure. So Nginx. Uh, yeah, so here's like, there's a ton of config for Nginx. 
uh, like virtual hosts, add SSL, this like turns on Let's Encrypt automatically. Uh, yes, that, that's so cool. Uh, you can force SSL, stuff like that. Um, cool, right? Yeah. Uh, question. Can you show the open SSH front and if there's a way to disable uh, <laughs> firewall port yeah. that's open? Which sure. probably leads me for my next, my next question. Yeah, I love this question. Okay, so. Um, I don't want ports 22 to be open by default. Right. So I think that is workable. Uh, yeah, so serve, I just typed in service.openSH. Oh, uh, the open firewall defaults to true. You said so it's false. My, my next question was, if this wasn't set, how could I overlay a module? What do you mean? Uh, I'd like to override an existing module. Okay, tell me more. Uh, in the same way that uh, I override a package sure. in order to change some of the functionality of that particular module. So I tend to copy past the whole module and mm -hmm. call it something else. Okay, so like, what do you want to do exactly? Uh, for instance, I tend to uh, I use uh, an example I use Thin, mm -hmm. and uh, I set up a VPN, and then I use multiple services that only bind to a particular IP address, sure. uh, so that they are never available uh, anywhere else except VPN IP address. Okay. And for that, with Kubernetes and a bunch of other stuff. Okay, I'm going to make a note to cover overriding service service bits, but I, I not don't want to get to that just yet. Yeah. Okay. If you can open SSH, you can, like, if you're not modifying the code, you can just modify the config. So if there's a kind of mix, kind of config option for open SSH, you can probably do the binding from that. We'll cover that later. Well, that's, okay. It gets a bit, bit uh, specific. Um, all right. So any other questions so far? Cool. All right. Um, uh, go ahead. Can you show how to see this from the command line? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's that's exactly where. Do you want to see it in VM or where you can actually read it? I mean, nixos option. Yeah. I don't know where are you? Uh, well, so there's two ways. So there's first there's a man page for configuration.nix, and uh, it's large. Um, it's uh, very large. Um, Quite large, uh, almost 10, 100,000 lines. Uh, and so this contains every single NixOS option that the entire operating system supports. Um, so like oh, uh, uh, services.openSH.openFirewall, uh, uh, there you are, default true. And uh, there's, there's that definition. Cool? Cool. All right. Um, what's something we should do? Oh, no, can, can you show nixos-option? Oh, sure, yeah, nixos uh, This will show up for my laptop, actually, which could be cool. Uh, so <laughs> nixos-option lets you in interrogate a, a configuration. Um, so, like, uh, programs.sway, I think I used that one. Um, ah, okay, so programs.sway isn't a full one, so maybe that enable. Uh, so there you are. Uh, programs.sway. Um, value, I set it to true, the default is false. Uh, sample, you can set it to true. <laughs> and the, the description that's in, embedded in Nix packages. Um, it's kind of poorly formatted, that's a bug for sure. Uh, and here's where it's declared. And this is where I've specified the value I want. All right, so maybe let's take a look at that file because it's pretty cool that it shows it like that. Yeah, oh yeah. I think I'll also answer my question, which would have been, what's the thing with uh, programs on sway on enable, and instead of just plugging, uh, putting sway into system packages, mm. like, what like what's it doing? Yeah, what is it doing? But yeah. I think we will see. It. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is where I feel like NixOS gives me superpowers, because you install like. You, you, like on a Debian system or something, or Ubuntu, you like have to get install KDE or Plasma, and it just installs a bunch of hooks, and then your system's doing what? I don't know. And all these programs have different hooks that are all interacting together, and I don't feel like it is clear to me how to know what it's gonna do. So let's start, take a look at what programs.sway.enable will do. Uh, and I'll do this in the browser, because uh, I think that'll be a bit nicer. So, <coughs> Programs.sway.enable. Um, cool. And I'll make this bigger. All right. So on on the web interface, it takes you to GitHub, which is cool. Um, okay. 
So uh, we'll skip across the top because this is all just some stuff, some background stuff. Remember, Nix is a lazy language, so let's le read this a bit lazily. Uh, so the first section in a module like this is where you define some options. These are just a description of the options that you want to be available. Um, and so there's that config that we saw, the uh, description that we saw in the man page. Um, we have another option here, extra session commands, where you can just run some arbitrary commands when things start up. Uh, some extra packages. Uh, the, so this, for example, installs by default Sway Lock, Sway Idle, Sway VG, X Wayland, RWT, and D Menu. Um, so these pack, if, if you enable Sway, these will be installed with it. If you disable Sway, those packages will no longer be installed. Uh, and some example there. Um, we will move on. Okay, so here we go. Here's the actual implementation of the module, of where it's actually doing a thing. If it's enabled, CFG just refers to uh, packages.sway. So this is packages.sway.enable. Or, yeah, programs.sway.enable. Sorry. Uh, if that's enabled, it adds some environment variable or some environment settings. So it adds sway and the extra packages to your environment. It adds an Etsy uh, slash Etsy slash sway slash config file, which is a symlink to this uh, the default config. It enables Sway Lock in PAM. It enables OpenGL, enables some fonts, and enables dconf. And that's it. That's what, that's what happens when you do programs.sway.enable. This equals true. Cool. Make sense? Yeah, man. And everything in here is... I, I need a mirror. I'm listening. I can see. And everything in here is undone. So if you, if you enable Sway and then you turn it back off, all of the stuff goes away. That file in Etsy will no longer be there. Let's take a look at another one. Mm -hmm. Why are those two lines on? Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. That's a great question. I'm, I'm triggered by things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain a bit, like, make option default? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, yes. So this gets a little bit into the weeds. But so uh, this just adds the default. So, like, the sway package comes with a default config, so it can start. And maybe you want to specify your own Sway config. And so you can override that file in your own config, and then it will take precedence. So make option default makes it very low precedence. And if you, um, if you set it without make option default, it's a higher precedence. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Mm, yeah. So. Uh, NixOS modules are uh, uh, a delightful bit of uh, programming tricks um, in order to make all the modules merge together. And so one of the tricky things is Nix can't know if, like, so if in this block you could do programs.sway.enable equals false, right? And uh, the module system knows it needs to know ahead of time the total sum of every configuration before it's merged, so that it can merge it together. Uh, and that, that make a, it's, it's a, it's a magic trick to get rid of recursion problems. All right? What happens if you set conflicting options in two different modules? Yeah, so every module can do that. Yeah, so, cool. Let's, um, let's take a look at another one. Maybe we could look at OpenSSH. And, uh, look, is that, is that, is that a complicated one? Yeah. X <laughs> server. <laughs> no, no, I don't want a complicated one. <laughs> I just want to give them like the tools to go explore the complicated ones. <laughs> or maybe assistant packages with the same processes emerging. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, to inspect well, all right. So this one turned out to be a comp bit complicated. Uh, but so here we have services that open SSH set as option. Enable, start when needed, some other common flags that you have for OpenSH. Um, we'll get past, this is all like documentation and option setup. But none of this is actually doing anything. Down at the end, we have that make, make if, config.enable. Uh, and uh, so here we are. It creates its own user for, for isolation. It adds some S, uh, SSH files to Etsy um, and sets up a system D service. 
so this system B service, let's see, uh, uh, wanted by multi-user, uh, it needs network to start, um, staff change is false, so that like if you've changed it, it doesn't kick you out of your server, that's very nice. Um, and uh, then, some, then some scripts that it, it will start execute as it starts up, like generating the host keys. Uh, this turned out to be a bit more complicated than I was expecting, um, so maybe we'll take a look at a different one. Maybe the user one? Thank you. Sure. Telnet. <laughs> telnet? I'm not even sure we have Telnet. Yeah, we don't have Telnet, so <laughs> thank goodness. Uh, let's see. Let's, uh, let's just go take play around with this VM a little bit. Does that sound good? So we've got a uh, we've got this configuration. We had it had uh, nginx. I didn't demonstrate curl working in the VM. I'm not sure it did. All right. Curl one two seven two one. All right, so there's that uh, that website that we had defined earlier on. Um, let's see. All right, so uh, let's change that. Let's disable nginx. Oops. So just setting that to false. Oops. And. Uh, This is obnoxious. And then we'll rebuild. So this is a, a brand new system configuration. It's going to reuse the uh, hard disk that we had before. So we can do uh, hello VM. It's going to boot all up again. And uh, if we run curl, it's not running. So curl, our nginx is no longer running on the host. There's essentially no trace of it. Um, there should be logs. Mm, nginx doesn't log very much. That also helps I spell it correctly. So there you are. We can see that it did run nginx at one point because the system has logs. Yeah. Uh, inside the VM, do you have access to the Nix tools? No, it's, it, it's a full, full thing. And could you build a, a used version which would only have the services that you actually specified and, and not the Nix could? Maybe for a constrained system, like an embedded system or so? Oh, so like to turn off Nix, like so you don't even have Nix. In, yes, so you don't have Nix in the build image. Yeah, that's a cool yeah. idea. I don't think you can do that right now, but okay. I think you should be able to do that. That's a great idea. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Gotta get to the dicks. <laughs> cool. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Just going to. Um, all right. I actually have a question. Yeah. So we just turned on, turned off the uh, engineers, right? Yeah. Can we enable the Nginx inside the, uh, the virtual machine? Hmm. So, uh, let's see. So it, it's kind of unfortunate because the font really sucks. Uh, so it's kind of hard to see. But what we could do is we could copy this config in and do a DixOS rebuild. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know that that could work. I'm interested if, could, if we would be able to enable it inside the virtual machine and then we would shut down the virtual machine and turn it off if it would be still enabled. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, as long as you inside a VM you did a Nixos rebuild switch, yeah. uh, it would write to disk and have a new bootloader and, and bring up the new one. So then you have a Nix conflict and then you have the, the virtual machine that yeah. are not the same. That's kind of dangerous. How do you avoid this situation? Yeah, sure. So, uh, 
when I deploy to real things, like with NixOps, which is sort of a similar idea to this, um, I do this thing where I, I, I taint it. Um, uh, so inside I have, I add a custom configuration.nix, which fails saying you're on your server. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, so as you uh, said, like the, the configuration that mix is yeah. not in slash nix. So sorry, in slash. Uh, Let's see, nix or ask configuration. Yeah, it's not mix. there in the VM by default, is it? Not in well, not in this one. No. Not Why not? Uh, well, it doesn't need it. Well, okay. It, so so it ideally for demo purposes it would. Like for this demo, it would, so I could be in there and just like hacking around and playing and stuff. Uh, but it doesn't, right? You know, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. So like usually when I'm working on an XS module, yeah. then I usually like you want to iterate. Yeah, and yeah. Then what I end up doing is reboot the whole VM every time, which takes time. Mm. Yeah. So this could be nice. So you should totally be able to have a config in there and like NixOS yeah. rebuild switch and like do updates to your yeah. system. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've got me when I first did that. I was looking for wanted to rebuild my VM. There was no configuration but Nix, so I just import it and then rebuild like that. I think that's, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's a feature or just a, some things in Nix don't make sense until you start doing it. And then he goes, oh, I see why they are doing that. Yeah. So let's take a look at um, my system config because I think uh, I think there's some kind of interesting stuff in there. Um, let's see. Uh, oops. Uh, all right. Um, okay. So there was a question about overriding services and overriding options and services. Uh, one thing you can do is uh, so. Let's take a look. So I have this uh, definition here of Nix GC, where it garbage collects as Nix automatically. Let's move the browser into window and go to the NixOS options. So services.nixgc, oops, nixgc, gc, nix.gc. <laughs> All right, so uh, there's this option nixgc automatic. You turn that on, it'll periodically collect garbage off the system. Uh, garbage being nix store pads that are not used by any other store pads on your system. Um, so this is uh, fairly familiar, I think, at this point. We define some, a few options, specifically automatic, which is uh, interesting. Um, and uh, let's see. So it, it, cre it always creates the Nix GC service, but only creates some, uh, a reason to tell SystemD to start it if you've specified automatic. Um, and, and so this, that's, that's all this is. Pretty simple. Any questions about this? I'm worried I lost a bunch of you, um, and I apologize if I have. Uh, but uh, okay, so I I like this. This is pretty good. Um, I have la configured my laptop to run garbage collection uh, uh, every five minutes. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, every ten minutes. Okay, so I've specified Nix GC. Oh, that's not good. Uh, to automate the true, and I told system D you start this every 10 minutes, collect all the garbage again. It's not annoying. It's It's super annoying. That's why I work in a project called Lori. Uh, and actually, I did this because I wanted to make Lori good. Um, anyway, so this is pretty good, but what is really annoying is if I'm on an airplane, or I am unplugged and can't plug in, and I garbage collects a bunch of stuff, and I, I have to spend a bunch of battery power rebuilding all this stuff. And uh, you can see that this, op this module has specified systemd.services.nix-gc. And so we can, uh, we can go fiddle with it. Uh, so here we are. We have systemd.services.nix-gc. And we can extend it. So I have added this unit config called condition AC power. And so only if I am plugged into the power will nix-gc start. Yes? Thank you. You're welcome. Well, of course. I have a few. Can you override an exist an existing existing well flag in system? Uh, 
usually? Well, for instance, like the start comment that was already defined and it's easy. Can you override it uh, let me, yes, let me show just one more and I'll get back to it. So here's another one. I use ZFS in my file system and uh, ZFS scrubs means read everything on your disk and make sure it's good. And that's not nice to run while you're not on battery power either. Um, and so it doesn't. It, uh, it prevents it. Okay, let's look at that other one. You could have seen the thing. I can't believe you have this level of control of your services. <laughs> this is, I know. Normally you'd have to isn't that cool? Look around for ages yeah. to get that shit to work. That's really nice. <laughs> That's why I like Vix. Yeah, me too. Because it works. And it's easy to do these things. <laughs> me too. All right, so uh, the, the script. Are you talking about the script? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So we could totally do that. We could, um, let's see. We'll, we'll break this up a little bit. So we'll make this a little more uh, normal. So that's the same thing, right? And uh, we can totally do script equals... Um, Right, so we could we could do that. This would be fine. Yeah, actually, it gets merged merged together. Oh, does it? Oh, yeah. so so it'll run this first and then. Yeah. Okay, so it will Mark. merge them. But how about make for us? All right. So in this case, it will just add some more script to run. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we could use lib dot make for us, and uh, this will make it a higher priority and say nothing. What is like by default? Just do this. I, I need to go back and do a lot of code now. Okay, good. Yeah, okay, so um, cool. So let's try that. Is that cool? Um, uh, let's try NixOS rebuild switch. Zero. Come on now. Uh, so this is the actual laptop. Oh boy. Um, oh. Alright, so I have a custom branch of Nix packages, so I need to set that. Uh, cool. So this is going to use the, just the checkout of Nix packages that I have um, and uh, use that version of Nix packages to build my system. Man, I can't believe you do live demos. What's that? You, you do live demos of this. <laughs> this still works on stage. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> let's try that. So we'll start Nix GC. Uh, and, uh, and I'm doing a live demo on my actual laptop. Uh, so there we go. It, uh, instead of running a garbage collector, it just printed not today. Um, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I actually don't want that. So I'm going to delete that and return it back to normal. Um, I sometimes I like to do things that feel a little scary. Uh, you know, earlier demo I did a Nix build which deleted everything in my system. But it did work because it would have been a mix build. Uh, but if I'm being honest with you, I actually do embrace a lot of my system on every boot. Um, where, uh, so every time my system boots, I run a ZFS rollback on my blank, on the root file system, and everything on my root file system gets erased. Um, that does not impact my Nix directory or my home directory, but everything else is done, and this is fine. NixOS can boot without. Uh, without anything in your root, it doesn't need anything in Etsy, it doesn't need anything in user or in var or, or lib or anything like that. Um, it just, uh, it's just, it's fine. It's fine booting just from Nick store. And when you do that, just uh, uh, for security? Or uh, just, just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's like having always clean installation. Yeah, yeah. So one thing that really was annoying about this, so, um, <coughs> One thing I do is my, my network configurations, like my, the joint Wi-Fi networks, that's not erased. Uh, but my Bluetooth configs are erased, and my very nice headphones <laughs> stopped pairing. So I had to buy new headphones, <laughs> uh, which is not so nice. Um, do you want to have time? Sorry? sorry? Do you want to have time? Oh, oh, sorry? Up time. Up time, yes. Oh, up time. Oh, Oops. Yeah, so a few hours? <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah, is, is this important to you? Yeah. No. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, you know, I've got lo loads of machines, and like one goes down, and just, the others take over. So. <laughs> um, oop, let's see. Let's do. Uh, yeah, configuration. What else is kind of cool in here? Um. Craig, can I ask you about this merging that I don't understand, or is that too complicated? We can talk about merging. A mere mortal I need to understand. Yeah, let's talk about merging. Like configuration merging? 
Yeah, I don't understand the concept. Yeah, of, of work. sure, that's totally reasonable. So, and here I have this environment, like, to take this example, I have environment, uh, and inside environment is variables, and then some variables that I've specified. And uh, other places said environment dot variables too. So, uh, I like, uh, what's that? I'll get to understand that. Like yeah. These uh, things are vying for the same oh boy. variables, perhaps. Um, that's not loading. Uh, oh, there we go. All right, so uh, we'll ignore that one. Here's a, here's a place in XDG portals where it sets some more environment variables and uh, some input method variables are set. And, and all of this comes down to the make option. So NixOS options, many of them have merge behavior. So if two uh, or more places define the same value, they'll merge in some way. Uh, in this case, the value is an attribute set, so the merge behavior is take the two attribute sets and, and get the sum of the two. Um, uh, some, with lists, the default behavior is to take all the lists and just append them in order. Uh, and what order, I couldn't tell you exactly. Uh, so here is a kind of complicated one, profile relative environment variables, and this is an attribute set of lists. And so in this case, the attribute sets would merge and the list inside of them would merge. Um, uh, yeah, so does that explain merging? Yeah, cool. um, one thing um, is like, if, if these services were like Nixified and they knew about the store and the derivations and stuff, could they, because there's a lot of fudging to get traditional generic Unix services to work in this framework. Hmm. So if, if say OpenSSH would like, they went, well, Nix is great. And like, here's, an, but, here's a module. Yeah, I yeah. mean, would that make things simpler to maintain and make uh, a better system hang together, or...? It's a, bit, it's a bit tricky. So part of the superpowers I think Nix gives me, and Nix packages gives me, is everything's in one place. Yeah. But if I have to like get the OpenSSL, OpenSSH package to look at it, I feel like that's a lot more complicated. Okay. You have a question? Yeah, if, are you going to like look, show how basically modules, like the modules infrastructure, as in, not the modules themselves, but like no. the code? No, no, no okay. it's, it's too much. Okay. Yeah. How do you know if the options are set for mergeable or not mergeable? Yeah, so it's by type. Um, almost all of them are mergeable. Some don't have sensible merges. You can't merge a true and a false, right? So if you declare a type as a Boolean, and one place declares it as enabled and another disabled, it'll be an error, and it won't, it won't create a system. Um, does that answer it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, pretty much... I, pretty much all are mergeable. Yeah, pretty much all are mergeable, and I think in a way that is intuitive. Yeah. How do you manage your secrets? Like My secret secrets. secrets like yeah. Keys, uh, yeah, sure. Keys so SSH keys, I copy them in, or I use a hardware dongle. I don't put those in my NixOS config. Uh, I have uh, some, like, Wi-Fi secrets. Uh, I Those are... I mean, so typical a typical system, and in fact, uh, wait. So for SSH, you use hardware dongle because you don't remove your user data, so you don't have. So so I mean I, I do that just like just like anybody else. Um, so oops. I have like an SSH directory, and I have a config, and I have oh, some okay. keys in there, and and Nix Nix doesn't touch that. Um, for other secrets, I try to put them elsewhere. Secrets in XOS is a bit of an unsolved problem, and the only real concrete advice is don't put your secrets in Nix. No. Because no. <laughs> uh, you don't want them in your Nix store. Nix ops has a way to avoid uh, you putting them in. Yeah, yeah, but so that's way, <laughs> way too far. Yeah. Um, so you basically configure your own software, your main client, whatever, pointing to your USB hard drive, uh, USB donor. No, just like SSH keys and GPG keys, like that's on a UV key. Yeah, I mean, I use I use tools like other people use too, so like pass or yeah. even just like a, a a lockdown file in my doc config directory. <laughs> Nothing special, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so next question, does it have a backups, for example? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, good point. So he's saying uh, secrets are like state, and and I agree with that. So typically, uh, secrets have a different life life cycle than your system. Um, if I were to reboot and like I rolled over a bunch of my SSH keys, I wouldn't want to roll back and have the old SSH keys again. Uh, so I, I treat them as completely separate. Um, thank you. Yeah. How are you doing backups? <laughs> sure. Uh, okay. So I back I I. So I use ZFS, so I feel like this is cheating a little bit, but the only <laughs> thing I back up is my home directory. Yeah, I, I, I trust my system, and uh, it wasn't Nexos' fault, it was our fault, because uh, we had too much beer. And uh, we managed to restore the whole system with its config, uh, without any backups, uh, with the old root file system, and it was fantastic. So uh, I, I rescued the system, I got data off, but I got the system back to the state it was before uh, we drank too much. Mm. Um, was, yes. What was this with? Uh, with the, uh, our machine at home, so okay. uh, it was just like a, well, yeah. just some important stuff, so. Gotcha. Yeah, I can't remember how we fucked it up, but mm. uh, we did. Okay. So uh, we, uh, we couldn't boot it, it panicked, could have, could have panicked, mm -hmm. could have boot. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we did a Nixos, I think we actually installed Nixos from, it, from, a, from a USB drive and then made a new partition and then did a, a Nixos rebuild switch and got brought the new config in yeah. and uh, it kind of all worked and it was mm. like holy crap <laughs> right on uh so we're way over time wow uh i'm sorry uh i didn't mean to do that um i just showed you one more thing which are a, a real cool thing is that when you're changing the, say the configs of nginx and stuff like that all the all the changes you've ever done go into the store and that got me out of some trouble because I, I got like a hashed revision versioning sure. by by a side effect of our next work so I've uh, uh, knackered up my Nginx config, yeah. so I was able to, sure. it, it wasn't yep. a git, yep. but it wasn't the Nix store, so I was managed yep. to do a diff back and find out what the problem was. Yeah, yeah, so okay, so uh, every Nix OS system has this thing called, uh, it had a profile, and so my current system is this, uh, whatever that is, and my booted system is probably the same. Actually no, it's different, uh, because I played with the, uh, the GC tuning uh, options. Um, and also, I can do Nixos uh, rebuild rollback, right? And, uh, nope. Switch, switch, switch. Yep, switch. And so, what this will do, oops, gotta be root. Um, so, it's, I'm on version 252, and it's going back to 251. And in fact, I could do that again, and I'm back at 250. And eventually this is going to break because my networking configuration, maybe this time even. Um, and uh, that is all in Nix, our Nix profile system. Uh, oops, too many. So these are all the systems I've had, uh, almost. It starts at number 100. Um, and those are all, let's see. Oh, no, it doesn't start at number 100. It starts at number maybe four, three. That's pretty good. Is there a two? I see a two. You see a two? Oh, there's a two. I don't think I have a one. So there's my config from uh, January of 2019. And uh, if I wanted to, I could roll back to that. Um, I wish I had a like different desktop setup because I could also do it at the bootloader. Um, if I reboot, I can. Uh, it will show me a list of all the configuration versions I've ever had, and I can pick one and, re and boot to it. Uh, there is a file uh, at the pass slash run slash current system slash uh, sw okay. and it's uh, actually a link to the output uh, pass of the store to the system yeah. and I was wondering why it's not a link to uh, the profile of the system mm. uh, so, maybe it's not, uh, so this topic, uh, so current system itself is like a symlink Yes. So I can yes. actually so so it's all self-contained in there, and so linking to a profile would be variable, whereas whereas this is is fixed. Anyway, this we're super over time, so I feel bad keeping y'all here. Um, we should take a minute, let people leave, and then if people have more questions, we can keep asking questions. Yeah.